Hello everyone, welcome to the very last episode of Vlogmas for 2021. This today is the 24th of December. I'm coming to you from here from Melbourne, Australia. Of course, we're a day ahead of most of the rest of the world. So we are getting full swing into our Christmas preparations here. I'm just going to uh, show you a couple of things. The advent calendars, my Christmas day dress is ready and waiting to show you as well. And before I get started, I need to show you some beautiful roses that have just erupted in the last day or so. Uh, some favourites of mine. I am not the best rose grower in the world. I find them a little bit more tricky to grow. Uh, although they grow quite easily, it's getting a beautiful bloom that hasn't sort of been covered in aphids. They are a bit tricky to care for, but when you get a good one, boy oh boy do they shine. Uh, this particular one is one of my favourites. It's called Fragrant Cloud. It is the most beautiful beautiful like a watermelon color pinky red have a look at the bloom on that now the best thing about this is the amazing aroma of course it's called fragrant cloud for a reason it is the most highly perfumed rose that I have it's just very powdery and sweet but really love this one and although it's not the most proficient bloomer you might only get one or two um, huge ones on the bush when they come out they're just spectacular the other favorite of mine is one that my grandfather used to grow and he showed me it was called just joey now my husband's name is joe so it's kind of fitting that we grow these but the just joey is the most beautiful peachy apricot color and the blooms on these are just massive so you can see how big that one is and that they'll actually get bigger as the season goes they're one of the first to bloom in spring summer and then one of the last to bloom as well so they will just keep going and going and they'll be the best uh, flowering rose that you'll have I can guarantee you that so just joey and fragrant cloud are a couple of my favorite roses now I have got the pavlova recipe coming up for you so stay tuned towards the end of the episode you'll get to see how I make my pav I love making a pav so I'm leaving that till the day before Christmas now this year for Christmas we although we're doing a little bit of uh, food shopping I actually decided to take a bit of the stress out by ordering the hello fresh Christmas um, planned recipes now my daughter actually um, she usually buys HelloFresh for herself, although they're fantastic recipes and I love the food. I find it for a really big family, they're not quite as economical as it might be for one to two people. Even um, a family of four, they'd feed quite easily. But um, for having a big family like us with seven, sometimes to 10 people for a, a meal, uh, I find it would be a bit too expensive for me to just keep buying that. But with the Christmas, they actually did have a 10 to 14 place setting meal um, kit that you can buy. And it was delivered to my doorstep yesterday Day, packaged up beautifully so I got the hello fresh um, meal to have for dinner and it comes with you know, your ham your, your chickens all of your vegetables and salad all of your pre-packed sauces everything possibly that you could want other than things like um, your staples like olive oil um, and spices to have in your cupboard also it's a pineapple brioche trifle that which sounds amazing so all your recipes are there ready to be um, planted they even give you uh, a scheduled timeline which is fantastic so when to start preparing the foods and when to have them ready so I just think that's invaluable to a busy person I would highly recommend definitely to order that I mean it's a bit late now but maybe for next year if you're thinking about that and you've seen it advertised it is a fantastic looking easy prep way to do a Christmas meal so and I also got the cheese platter um, for a bit extra as well so I think it was it ended up being around 400 Australian dollars for 14 people which is look I probably spend more than that if I went shopping and um, bought all my groceries and just willy-nilly threw everything in the trolley because you can end up buying way too much food and preparing too much uh, but I usually love uh, HelloFresh's recipe so yeah I'll let you know how it goes it's definitely worth a try well let's get on to the calendars firstly we've got a due days 22 23 and today 24 because of course uh, I had a couple of days where I wasn't on Logmas. She had to take my mum to hospital for a procedure yesterday which went really well. Everything's fine there but it meant a day of me being out of the house um, all day until about 6 p.m. I had to pick her up. So that day was scrapped and of course just the exhaustion of running around this time of year for Christmas. It can be really hard to keep up with that. So Logmas, yeah, towards the end here is getting a bit willy-nilly with days but I'm trying to make sure I get this last one out because I know a lot of you wanted to see what I was doing for Christmas uh, so 22nd is this one here I'm just going to open this up and see what other little treats the Collie in the Machine has and I know a lot of you are definitely going to cockies are out 
definitely going to be getting this calendar if they have it again next year. <laughs> they like to fly over as soon as you guys come on. <laughs> this one's really cute. There's no words. It's just some lovely little sewing symbols. So I think that's really nice. Something a bit different. I really like the way this calendar is going and it's the different options for tags that you're given there. So that's 22. 23 is at the top and it's a beautiful little dash hound. And actually I um, grew up having dash hounds of pet um, Cindy. She was a long haired miniature. I loved her so much and she lived till she was about 13. But she had a lot of problems with her spine. We used to be really careful not let her jump too much. Um, but I love dash hounds and I really would like to get another one one day. Um, my mum also had a little short haired one uh, probably about 15 years ago now that was beautiful. Um, so they're gorgeous little dogs. Haha, <laughs> this is a great one. Not for sale. Look at that. You can't buy this. <laughs> I love how they're cheeky and a bit fun as well. This hanging plant is number 24. Looking so. forward to opening up for the last time. I'm actually going to be a bit sad not doing this because I've been really looking forward to it. Let's see what number 24. Aha, circa 2022. Oh, look at that. All prepared for next year. And I notice a lot of people use those with their other tags as well. Uh, and they'll do a double tag. Uh, a lot of people have also been using these tags so they're visible, so not always hidden on the inside of the garment. So I was really happy with that, and I would highly recommend that for next year for a treat. I just think there's been a lot of thought. Uh, and all the artwork and illustration put into it's been really nice and fun to use. So that is my calendar, done and dusted. I thought I'd better bring out the Coco Black calendar because... Everyone's enjoying seeing these. Uh, okay. 22, 23, and 24. You can see I've held off the last couple of days because I wanted to show you guys. Now, 22 I actually did happen to eat when I wasn't uh, filming. It was a milk sienna strawberry heart. A bit naughty of me. 23, let's see what we've got here, is, oh, it's a milk hazelnut cluster. These are really nice. It's nice to get a milk one. I quite like the milk ones for a change. And 24. Let me see. I've actually got a 25 on here as well. So that'll be interesting to see what that is. It's a milk salted caramel, which I think we've already had one of those before. But that's beautiful as well. So I'll make sure I definitely have those sometime before the end of the day. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you, before I show you the pad recipe, I want to show you the dress I made for Christmas Day. I think you're really going to love it. It's one of my tried and tested Vogue patterns. Now, I happen to be a very big fan of the very easy Vogue patterns. I think they, they really tend to suit my body shape when I make them. I find them rather simple. Um, they come together quite well. This one I made a size 16. I did a version A, but I also incorporated the version B skirt. So I didn't put the ruffle. I used the split but I made it into a midi length. So I kind of did a bit of a mishmash of everything. The thing I like best about this pattern is that you do get a tiny bit of ease throughout the midriff section so that if you're worried about things like getting the fit right and there's no zips, no buttons, there is a tie back and you can make that tie back a bit longer. So if you want to wrap it around the back and the front, you can do that. You can also actually tie it at the front underneath that bust line if you want to do that instead of tying at the back. Um, but I've just opted to tie it at the back. And I'm really happy with how it came up. I absolutely love it. I made the split kind of to the knees, a little bit more daring. Uh, really happy with the midi length. But most of all, I am absolutely thrilled with the fabric, how it came up. This is my kind of Dolce Gabbana inspired fabric that I bought from Cloth Edit uh, quite some months ago now. And I was saving up especially for Christmas. I've put a little tag in there saying party dress from my calendar which I really wanted to use that for Christmas Day. But I love the red roses. I love the leopard print, the vibrant uh, colour of it. But the fabric itself is a dream to work with. The linen silk that you'll find from Cloth Edit is just incredible. And even though she hasn't got this particular Postano print left, there are many other prints there I think you're going to love. But to wear it, it is so beautiful to wear. It's light and floaty, but it does have a bit of body. And it's so lovely to work with, to sew with. It has a bit more softness to it than just a regular linen. And it doesn't wrinkle anywhere near what a linen would wrinkle like. So if you love linen, love wearing it, but you don't love that crinkly effect. <laughs> Cockies are really out today. If you don't want that crushed effect, I think you'll really enjoy uh, working with and wearing that linen and silk. So have a bit of a look at how it turned out. So 
I really am, I'm in love with it. I am just thrilled with how it came up. I'm a D cup in a regular bra, but in a sewing, I'm more like a C cup. Now, if I think if you were bigger than a C cup in sewing, I would probably look at fitting your bust. It isn't very um, roomy around the bust. It's quite, uh, it sits quite firm. There's not a lot of ease. So think about maybe either doing a full bust adjustment or sizing up around the bust area. So definitely make a 12. Um, the reason I didn't need to is because I have made it in the past, so I knew it fitted me okay uh, it does have little darts at the back fitting around the shoulders but a really nice simple make definitely uh, I would think about using the long sleeve for a gorgeous winter dress as well so really thrilled with how it's come up if you want to stick around for the pav recipe I've got it coming up right now now the recipe that I love using is from Donna Hayes modern classics book two um, I also had a um, recipe from when I was at high school I think it was the cookery the Australian way but this one's the same recipe and it never fails um, okay you need four egg whites one cup of castor so super fine sugar three teaspoons of corn flour corn starch same thing and you need some vinegar and I use a little bit of vanilla essence as well this book has been very well loved over the last 20 years um, yeah so the best way that I like to do is to organize my ingredients I would recommend separating your egg whites and egg yolks firstly into separate bowls so you don't get any yolk in amongst the egg white because that can ruin your meringue so make sure there's absolutely no egg yolk in that um, and I use um, this is my mum's grandmother's uh, pavlova plate which is like a sort of very fine china plate which uh, is heat resistant so you can actually bake the pavlova with a dusting of corn flour bake it on top of that if you haven't got something like that just use um, something like glad bake or um, grease proof paper baking paper underneath so your pavlova doesn't stick. So what I like to do is have the oven preheating while I'm making the meringue mixture. So I have it on 150 degrees Celsius, a fan forced, so low and slow. And then when the meringue gets to be put in the oven, I reduce it to 130, so it's quite low, but that way it gets a really nice kind of dry, crispy shell. Otherwise you can end up with like a more of a chewy kind of texture, which is fine, but traditional um, pavlova is always like nice and crispy on the outside and meringue, like um, marshmallow texture on the inside. So I'm going to separate my egg whites to yolks. Now in the recipe it does say four egg whites to one cup. I always make mine a bit bigger. Sometimes I'll double it. This time I'm going to go one and a half. So I'm going to use six egg whites to one and a half cups of sugar. Gradually add one and a half cups to the six egg whites. So nice and gradually. Now this looks exactly the consistency it's meant to be, but the way I, I try and find if it's done is I rub my fingers together. If it still feels like there's sugar crystals in there, then it needs to go a bit longer. I love my Kenwood. Highly recommend it. This is a major titanium um, and it wasn't cheap, but it's about seven or eight years old now. And I love it. All the different, um, has all different fittings. You've got like things like your whipping, beading. Um, there's a bread dough hook. Uh, you've got all your food processor and everything that goes on top. You've got a sausage mincer. It's an awesome machine and well worth every penny 
definitely love my Kenwood. Now, I'm going to check that again, make sure it's the right consistency. And yep, that sugariness has all disappeared, which is great. So it lets me know that it's ready to add the next few steps. So what we need to do is fold in the um, corn flour, vinegar and vanilla. So I like to just sift over the top the corn flour. And this helps get that marshmallow consistency on the inside. And then the vinegar and vanilla. Vinegar helps with that crisp shell and the nice white colour. And the vanilla gives it a lovely flavour. Bring the vinegar in, so a couple of teaspoons of white vinegar. And always best to either lightly fold it in or do it on a really low setting with your beater. So I'm going to pop it back in here. And we are nearly done. So I'll just fold that up. Nice and low and slow. The consistency should be lovely, soft, glossy peaks. So they've got to be glossy and they've got to be stiff enough to hold their own shape. Here you'll be able to hold it upside down and it shouldn't move out of the dish, out of the, out of the bowl. So that is the way I can tell usually if my meringue is beaten enough. Uh, you don't want to overbeat it either. You have to have that kind of happy medium. Now I like to... Um, I like to pile up as high as I can because it will spread a little when it's in the oven. So don't worry too much if you haven't sort of got it right to the edges. Um, if you pile up as high as it can go, it'll get really nice crispy kind of peaks on it that way. to create like a nest shape so I'll kind of hollow a little bit out in the middle some people like to sort of mount it right up on top um, I find that way it's really nice and easy to fill up with cream and fruit but I'll just leave all the peaks around the sides and we smooth up the edges a little bit and that's about it so that will be ready to pop into the oven to bake so it's nice and high the way it's piled on the plate with the peaks a little bit hollowed out in the middle but you can have it all piled up nice and high it just depends on your preference but uh, the low and slow temperature, the 150 Celsius is now down to 130 and you need to bake it for about an hour to an hour and a half, give or take, um, depending how much mixture you've made and how big it is. But this is a six egg white one. It should take about an hour and a quarter. Hopefully it'll be crispy on the outside um, and have a nice sort of shell and then marshmallow on the inside. Joe is preparing the turkey that will be smoked uh, on Christmas Day. And just explain what you're doing here, Joe. Uh, just wipe the packaging juice off it. I'm going to fry it for 24 hours. Then I'll stuff it, inject it, season it, and then put it on the smoker for about three and a half hours. So what are you injecting it with? Butter, Cajun seasoning, and a whole lot of other stuff. I haven't figured out yet. So the injecting happens like under the skin and between the meat. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Okay. the legs. And every year he's made it, it's turned out perfect. So it gets brined and soaked in an esky with ice. Um, so it keeps it nice and cold and it really gets the um, meat really nice and juicy and tender. And I've gone and picked up our fresh, or well, they're frozen fresh prawns, or we call them prawns, but you guys might know them as shrimp, but they're big, so they're pink prawns. And these will be a beautiful um, salad for lunch, a prawn cocktail with uh, some crayfish, which is uh, Aussie lobster. They're a bit smaller and they're a really lovely flavour. So that would be um, really nice with some avocado, lettuce and some mayonnaise dressing. So crayfish and prawns are a real... <laughs> Mabel. Uh, crayfish and prawns are a real uh, thing for Aussies to have for Christmas lunch or dinner. We love them. When it's finished cooking, what I like to do is let it cool in the oven with the uh, door slightly ajar. So that way it won't collapse. Otherwise, if you take it straight out of the heat and you know room temp, it'll just tend to collapse a little bit, which is fine. But if you want it to look nice, I like to keep it in the oven to cool down.
this is my finished result. I do like to put a lot of fruit on and it's all beautiful and in season at the moment. Um, you can see the shell is quite brittle and has that nice sort of echoey sound. So you know there's lots of marshmallow under there. And it does like cave in a little bit when you load it with so much fruit, but that doesn't really matter because that's how you eat it. And yeah, really happy with how it turned out. And it's one of our favorite desserts here in Australia at Christmas time. Some people will decorate them with peppermint crisp or flake chocolate. You can really put on whatever you want. I actually have in the past put things like Turkish Delight, uh, pistachios, raspberries. Um, you can really do all manner of things. You can also make a chocolate pavlova, which is really interesting too. So I really hope you have a wonderful Christmas if you're celebrating. Just eat, drink, be merry, make the most of it. Hopefully you get to see some loved ones and enjoy some time, maybe some quiet time celebrating as well. And I'm really looking forward to having some quiet time after Boxing Day and getting stuck into some sewing and just taking it easy around the family and maybe enjoying some of this beautiful summer weather. Now I have got plans to take you back to the beach over summer and of course to the beautiful gardens that I promised to take you all to so that is coming up on the channel not for vlogmas but in the next few weeks you all love seeing a bit of a different side of the channel not just the sewing but maybe a bit of the sightseeing as well and I think it's been lovely to bring that to you. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's supported the channel, been watching. A lot of people have donated to the coffee account to support that as well. So a big, massive thank you for that. But most of all, the people that have watched and commented a lot, it's really meant a lot to me. And it's um, been a wonderful thing to bring you guys. And I've really enjoyed every moment of Vlogmas. Stay tuned for Boxing Down the Channel. I have got a special surprise thing happening that I really think you're going to all enjoy. But most of all, I really wish you all a lovely, uh, wonderful, holidays and wonderful Christmas and I'll see you all in 2022. Bye for now.